Hey y'all, welcome to Miss Clark's chemistry class. In previous videos, I have taught you all about Vesper, and then I've taught you about polar and nonpolar molecules. Let's put both of those ideas together and practice. Also, if you're in my class, I'm gonna work the problems from our worksheet. Grab that. If you're not in my class, I've linked that down below so you can follow along as well. So go ahead and grab everything you need and let's get started. So let's look at our first example, NH3, nitrogen trihydride, or it's more common known name, ammonia. You know that yucky, stinky stuff that you might clean with? We need to decide what shape NH3 is going to be. The very first step in determining that is to draw its Lewis dot structure. I'm gonna speed right through the electron dot structure because I've already made a video about that. So if you're struggling with that, that's where you need to start. Okay, so nitrogen is going to be in the center, and we know nitrogen's in the center because hydrogen can never be in the center. So if we put nitrogen in the center, that leaves hydrogen on the outside. Now we need to count the valence electrons. Nitrogen has five, hydrogens each have one. Five, six, seven, eight. We have eight valence electrons to work with. Now we need to bond everything up. We've got three bonds. They each have two electrons. So we've used two, four, six valence electrons. Remember, we had eight, so we've got seven, eight. Okay, so here's our Lewis dot structure. But we've learned that this is not really the shape. Now, some people find it helpful to memorize that, gener that generic formula. And so they know one central atom, three bonded atoms in a lone pair, that's trigonal pyramidal. That's not how I do it though. I know that my lone pairs are gonna push my bonds down. So if I draw it like that, we've got that trigonal pyramidal shape. Let's remind ourselves what that 3D model looked like. Remember, if we're playing tug of war, we've got three ropes pulling down, no one pulling up, someone is going to win tug of war, trigonal pyramidal, plus remember, lone pair, Trigonal, pyramidal, this is going to be a polar molecule. Let's look at another example. Carbon tetrachloride. Carbon, four chlorines. Again, first step, we've got to draw that Lewis dot structure. Carbon, remember when carbon is available, it's always in the center. That leaves chlorine to be on all four sides. Let's count total valence electrons. Carbon has four, chlorine has seven. Remember, I'm getting that from the periodic table, and if you don't remember valence electrons, again, I've got a video for that. So we've got seven times four, that's 28, plus four, that's 32. That seems like a whole lot of electrons. I really truly think the more electrons you have, the easier it is. Okay, so I've bonded all the chlorines to carbon, so I've used two, four, six, eight, and carbon's happy, it's got eight. Now we're just gonna put all those lone pairs on all of the chlorines. So when we draw the Lewis dot structure of carbon tetrachloride, this is what we get. And this is how we learned how to draw the molecule. But we now know this is not really the three-dimensional shape. Okay, I've got one central atom. I've got four atoms bonded to it. That is tetrahedral. Anytime you have four atoms bonded to the central atom, tetra. Remember, tetra means four. Now, if we're gonna decide if this is polar or nonpolar, Let's look at that three-dimensional model again. Here we go. We've got the central atom here. We've got a symmetrical shape. Tetrahedral was symmetrical. And all the atoms are the same. So they have the same strength. If we're playing tug of war, they all have the same amount of strength. They're all pulling with the same strength. Therefore, no one's winning. So even though the bond between carbon and chlorine is a polar bond, these are all polar bonds. Because remember, it's a polar bond if it is not carbon and hydrogen or diatomic molecule. Carbon and chlorine, definitely a polar bond, but they all cancel each other out because they each have the same strength. So carbon tetrachloride, nonpolar molecule. Let's try another example. Let's look at HCN. I'm hoping you're thinking, ooh, that molecule starts with an H. That's an acid. CN, that's cyanide, this is hydrocyanic acid. We see that it's got a carbon. Carbon has to be central. 
So it's pretty much laid out exactly how it's going to be. So remember that first step is drawing its Lewis Stott structure. And I've already got it started. Carbon's in the center, hydrogen's on the outside, nitrogen's on the outside, because carbon's available. And remember, if carbon's available, it's always in the center. Let's add up the valence electrons. Nitrogen has five, carbon has four, hydrogen is one. So five plus four, we've got nine, plus one, we've got 10. I'm gonna bond these up. If you don't understand where that triple bond came from, check out the link that just came up on your screen. That'll help you with that. Okay, so we have the basic shape. We have a central atom, and we have two atoms bonded from that. This is linear. Now, remember, linear was a symmetrical shape, and symmetrical shapes normally mean nonpolar. But in this instance, we've got different atoms. One is nonpolar, one is polar. So basically, that's like saying someone very strong, someone very weak. You got it. Someone's going to win tug of war. Nitrogen's going to win tug of war. And if someone wins tug of war, polar molecule. Linear molecules aren't often polar, but if you've got two different atoms bonded to that central atom there, then you could very well get a polar molecule. Let's try another example. H2CO. Let's draw that Lewis Stott structure first. Carbon's available, so carbon's got to be in the center. So if we orient our atoms around carbon, we have get this. Let's count the valence electrons. Carbon has four, oxygen has six, hydrogen has one. 6 plus 4 is 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 valence electrons. Let's bond everything up. So when we draw the Lewis dot structure for H2CO, this is what we get. Remember, carbon likes to have four bonds, so that's why we've got that double bond. And then our extra electrons went on oxygen. And since those lone pairs are not on the central atom, we do not really worry about them. So here, we've got a central atom and three things coming off of it three atoms bonded on it. Now notice, we've got carbon and hydrogen. That's a nonpolar bond. Again right there, carbon, hydrogen, another nonpolar bond. Oh, carbon and oxygen, polar bond. Remember, if it's not carbon and hydrogen or diatomic, we're gonna consider it polar, polar bond. So we look, we gotta decide, is this a polar or nonpolar shape? And trigonal planar is normally a nonpolar molecule, but it's only nonpolar if you have the same element all the way around. And we don't, we have different. Here's a 3D representation of that. Basically, these guys right here, super, super weak because it's nonpolar bond, very weak. Polar bond, very, very strong. So even though we do have two things going this way, this super strong guy right here, he's gonna pull. Tug of war is going to be won by this super strong because there's nothing to negate that other polar bond. We're, we need something to cancel it out. We need another polar bond opposite to cancel it out. And we don't since these are non-polar bonds. Someone's winning tug of war that will always mean polar molecule. Now you should be a pro at figuring out the Vesper shape, figuring out if the molecule is polar and nonpolar. Lewis dot structures, we just put all of that together. If you're not feeling confident yet, go ahead and rewatch this. Practice those problems. If I didn't work a specific problem that you're really struggling on, put that in the comment and I promise I will come back and answer your questions. Share this video with your friends if they're struggling. Don't forget to press the like and subscribe button. Until next time, bye y'all.